What's going on everybody? In this video, I'm gonna talk about the Harvard CS50 Introduction to Computer Science. So if you wanna to get to the Intro to Computer Science, you can do it by going directly to the Harvard website, which is online-learningharvard.edu, and then just look up all courses and go to uh, subject area and then programming, and then you can get all their programming courses. They do offer a few free programming courses here. You can see they have an introduction to game development, an introduction to web development with Python and JavaScript, the intro to computer science, which is the one that I'm gonna be talking about in this video. And then they have a couple other free ones, which is the CS50 for lawyers, which is kind of niche. And I don't know if anyone's gonna be interested in that that's on my channel. They also have an intro to artificial intelligence and a quantitative methods for biology, which again is kind of niche. And I don't know if anyone's gonna be interested in that. They cover other topics in programming, but they're not free. So I'm not really gonna talk about any of those um, unless, people really want me to because they're kind of pricey and I don't know if anyone would be interested in that. I kind of like talking about free resources that you can use that don't really cost you any money. And these, as you can see, the price tags are pretty high on them. But if you're interested in them, you can check them out on their website, which I'll link below. But in this video, I'm gonna cover the intro to computer science. And when you decide to go to the intro to computer science, if you go through the Harvard website and you click on take me to the course, it's gonna open up edX.org. And edX is a learning platform that hosts a lot of different courses and programs. So you'll have to create an edX account if you don't have one already. Um, they have a lot of good free stuff on there, so I recommend doing it. Now, when you do sign in for the first time, it's gonna prompt you here to pursue a verified certificate. Now you can go ahead and do this, but I honestly think that, you know, while certificates may hold some value, I personally don't think that they hold much value and I wouldn't go around trying to collect certificates just to, you know, have them on your resume because I don't know how much that will actually help you. The real value from this course is actually the material that's in it and the stuff that you're gonna build and the stuff that you're gonna learn. It's not the certificate that you're gonna get for completing it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually go into audit this course. Now, with edX and Harvard and other resources that you can find on edX, many times they'll let you audit the course, which means you're allowed to do the entire curriculum and you can complete it and go with their whole itinerary and everything that they have planned out because they do kind of section it off by different weeks and they have a schedule, but you don't have to pay for a certificate. So you can do that and just audit the course and get everything that the course has to offer. So that's what we're gonna do. Now, when you decide to audit the certificate, it's gonna kind of give you an introduction to the program and it's gonna, you know, look at that. They already discounted the cert by like 30 bucks um, just for logging in. Either way, there's gonna be a quick introduction here on this uh, embedded YouTube video that's gonna tell you a little bit about the course. And this is kind of how these courses are structured. They're gonna have a lot of the information here. They're gonna have the communities that are listed here on the side, like their Discord groups and all their different pages that you can go to to get information from. And as you can see here, they have all that information listed as well. Um, we're gonna go ahead and just take a look at the actual curriculum here. Now you can see they have all of this for all of their curriculum. Let's just walk through each one of these and see what they have to offer for every week of the program. So going into week zero, because arrays start at zero, remember that, not one. Um, they're gonna have lectures, they're gonna have notes, they're gonna have slides, they're gonna have source code about everything they talk about. They're also gonna have a transcript so you can read everything, and then they're gonna have a problem. So here's the video that contains the lecture, and then you can watch this video, which is probably just gonna be the first intro lecture. I'm not gonna play any of this stuff, I'm just gonna kinda walk through the curriculum. You'll see and get an idea of how they structure everything, and since it is a college program, it's gonna be very college-like, and they're gonna have a lot of lectures, and they're gonna have a lot of like homework for you to do. So you can see this video here, and then if I go back to the, the written down curriculum, you can see that they have a problem here that might be pretty simple, and what it is is they're gonna have you download and install the latest version of Chrome, and then they're gonna submit Scratch, which I'm not totally sure what submit Scratch is. I'm not gonna get too deep into every one of these, but then you can see here they have the rest of their problems lined up for the CS50 according to weeks. Week one, it seems like they have you learn C, 
And this looks like it brought us into a different section for uh, where it's gonna be laying everything out. And this actually looks a little bit better laid out than the previous area that I was in. And here you can just kind of go through the same stuff. You're gonna have your lectures here. You're gonna have all your audio, your notes for the lectures, the slides that are included in all of the lectures, the source code that's included in the lectures, and everything you need for the lectures that they're gonna be talking about and basically telling you everything that you need to do. Here's gonna be your first lab that you're gonna have to do. And here's gonna be kind of like a short area that kind of takes you to all the stuff that they are talking about. And then you're gonna have your next problem that you're gonna work on. And here's your next problem for the first week. And now you're starting to see the pattern on how they set you up and how they have you work through all of this stuff. Sorry, sorry, I said first week. What I meant is the second week. Again, arrays start at zero, not one. So this would be the second week or the second set of problems for, for week two. And here's what they're gonna have you do. They're gonna have you uh, log, log into edX, I'm assuming. They're gonna have you reply to this thread and say hello, introduce yourself, submit this version of Mario if you're feeling less comfortable and submit this version of Mario if you're feeling more comfortable. Again, I don't know what they're teaching in this. I haven't gone through this curriculum in a very long time. I am pretty sure that the CS50 Intro to Computer Science, it is not the same program or it has drastically changed over the years because I don't remember it being structured like this when I looked at this years ago. So correct me if I'm wrong. And if you think this hasn't changed much in the last four years, uh, let me know in the comments. I really don't remember it being set up like this and, and, and not just because they updated the website, but because of the curriculum that they're actually covering. Like I don't remember HTML and CSS and JavaScript and any of this when I did like look through this when I first tried to do it when I was learning how to code, you know, four years ago now. Um, but as you can see, you'll submit your problems and you'll get that all done. And then you'll keep moving down through the different weeks. You'll keep following the curriculum the same way. Um, it's very much structured all the same. You're gonna be doing this in this same exact pattern all the time. It's gonna be a lecture in a video that you're gonna watch. There's gonna be slides, there's gonna be source code. There's gonna be some shorts that will kind of give you a rundown. Let's take a look at, at the shorts. Okay, so the shorts are actually videos that kind of go into more detail on the topics that they're covering. This is a really good course. They really cover a lot of stuff and they really set you up very well. Um, I know somebody had mentioned in the comments when I talked about the uh, three resources to use and someone said, well, the intro to computer science isn't enough to get you a job. Yeah, it might not be enough to get you a job, but it's going to give you enough resources to get on the path to getting a job. Because the person mentioned that it was a shorter course, that the other web development with Python and JavaScript was better if you wanted to get a job. And I'm not I'm not denying them, it, it might not be, but the truth is that if you go through this curriculum, you'll have enough tools in your tool belt to build websites, to start building your own projects, to build a portfolio, to really, really start doing what it takes to you know, be on track to get a job. While Free Code Camp and the Odin Project are like specifically set up to get you a job because they even cover you know, landing a job and job interviews and all that stuff in their curriculum, this course may not do that, but man, it gives you so much stuff that you should you should be on the right track and then you can find other resources that can help you with what you need to start looking for jobs or what you need to start being closer to getting a job. But if you go through all of this stuff, you're gonna learn a lot. So now we learn that the shorts are gonna be more videos and more just more details on the stuff that they're covering. And then they're gonna have a lab. We can take a look at the lab. And then in the lab, they're gonna have you build Scrabble apparently, which is very intimidating even for me because I, I don't even really know how I would start building a Scrabble game. And that would be something that would actually be really fun to take on and try to do. But you can see here, this is gonna be your lab. You're gonna try to build Scrabble. They're gonna give you a lot of implementation details and kind of how they want you to build it. It seems like they're having you build it in C. And they're, this is, this is some hard stuff. This, you know, now I'm starting to feel like this reminds me a little bit more of what I tried to do when I first started learning how to code and it was just way over my head and it was really hard. 
But if you stick with this curriculum, now I realize years after when I've learned how to code that you learn the most when you struggle through the hardest problems. And even though they feel like they're impossible at times, as long as you stick it out and you, you get through them, no matter how long it takes, you just do them, you'll learn so much. But if you do them for so long that you start feeling discouraged, it might be best to take a step back and maybe start with something a little bit easier if this in fact is a little bit too difficult for you, you might be better off checking out Free Code Camp or the Odin Project. But with that said, this is still just really amazing curriculum. I mean, it's a course from Harvard that you can do completely for free online. Like how awesome is that, right? We live in a day and age where like me, I, I would have never thought in a million years that I'd be able to do a course from Harvard when I was growing up. Like that wasn't in my my books. That wasn't going to happen for me. But, you know, in the age of the Internet, it's possible for anyone anywhere in the world. And that's what's so cool that we have these kind of things at our disposal now. Like it's just it's just really, really awesome. So, I, you know, I think I'm going to wrap this up because I don't want to get into every single bit of detail here because you kind of have the gist of what they're doing, right? You're going to have lectures. They're going to have notes for you. They're going to have the slides from the lectures that are going to like show you everything that they were showing in their slides. They're going to show you the source code for all the different stuff that they're showing in the code on the lectures. They're going to have the transcripts if you want to read it. And then they're going to have the searches, which are going to be, or I'm sorry, they're going to have the shorts, which are going to be like more digestible, smaller, tidbits of information for the stuff that they talked about generally in the lectures. So then you can do like a deep dive in all the topics and then you can just kind of repeat that throughout the weeks. And I know that there's a community aspect to this. I know that you got to kind of have to get your stuff graded. I'm pretty sure they still do that. I Again, I haven't done an edX course in a while, but I'm almost certain that there is some grading involved in this. I don't know to what extent they grade you and how strict they are on whether you pass or not. But really the benefit in this is completing it for yourself because man, this stuff, there's a lot of good stuff here. Honestly, I remember I was talking to Neil when I was doing a, um, a, a live stream with James Quick on his Auth0 uh, channel and, on Twitch, and there was a bunch of us there, and Neil brought it up that, you know, going through the Harvard CS50 after you've kind of like self-taught a little bit, and you've been coding for a while, and you go back to it, and you try to work through it, and you realize how much good information is on here, because really, there's a this is jam-packed. Like, they cover algorithms, they cover memory management, they cover data structures, and they cover different languages, and they cover Python and SQL, and and so much cool stuff that that I really am considering that maybe I might try to do this if I have some time, but I'm just so busy, but it kind of going through it, I'm like, oh man, I wonder how I would do now, four years later that I know a little bit more, you know, I, I, I know a lot more now than, than I did when I was first learning. And this would be actually a really challenging and fun thing for me to do. Um, but then we can just finish up here and we can kind of just look at a little bit of the rest of the stuff and we can look at their final project and see what the final project is. So it seems like for the final project, they want you to build your own piece of software. They want you to take whatever language that you want and they say that you're welcome to utilize, um, other infrastructures outside of the CS50 IDE. And all they ask is that you build something of interest to you that you solve an actual problem with that can impact a community or that you can change the world with. So this is pretty cool. I guess the final project is just to build something and they kind of give you a few ideas of what you can build here just to kind of, you know, if you're, if you're struggling with ideas, I know I struggle with ideas all the time. And then they, they give you a getting started here, kind of what, what they're, you know, kind of breaking it down a little bit for you to, to help you through the process a bit and let's see what else. So then the rest of it is going to be like how to submit your project and all that. So it does look like they're, I, I don't know if they're going to review it, but they might. Um, again, I don't know what kind of validation that they have for completion of projects and completion of homework. It's been a long time since I've done an edX course and I'm just not sure to be honest with you, but 
if you know, let me know in the comments if, you, if you've done some of this or if you've done another edX course and you remember actually being graded and having you know feedback from the stuff that you would put in and, and whatnot. So that's pretty much it. That covers a lot of the CS50. That covers pretty much everything that, that I think I wanted to talk about. One thing before we leave that I mentioned earlier in the video too was if you are interested in me talking about any of these the same way that I talked about the CS50 and kind of just walking through some of the stuff that they offer in their curriculum for these programs, such as the intro to game development or web development with Python and JavaScript, please let me know in the comments. I can do that. I have a feeling that they're gonna be very much structured just like the CS50. I think this is a great course. This is a great way to start learning. This is structured like a college program. It's gonna be probably better than most boot camps that you're doing online right now because all the curriculum is from Harvard professors and it's stuff that they actually teach at the university. So it doesn't get any better than that. I really can't see how a boot camp can compete with that other than offering you people to talk with. And if you join their Discord for the CS50, you can probably find a lot of people there that are willing to help yeah, it might not be the same as having a direct mentor, but I'm pretty sure that it's a good supplement for it, especially if you're gonna save thousands of dollars. So if you're one of those people that's on the fence about signing up for a boot camp and you don't know where to start learning online, check out the Harvard CS50 as your first option and give that a try or check out Free Code Camp or the Odin Project or just do a quick Google search and look around for other free resources. And there's a lot of stuff that you can use that'll get you right on track, that's well-structured, that doesn't cost a lot of money or that's completely free. With all that said, if you enjoyed this video, if you found value in it, please make sure to hit that like button. Subscribe to my channel if you wanna you know, get more information on learning how to code or, or tips and tricks on how to become a self-taught programmer and me talking about random stuff that might give you some motivation and whatnot. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.